today I'm going to be showing you how to build a bioactive terrarium. This is my chameleon gecko. I do have a video of the day that I unboxed him, so make sure you check that out. But as you can see, he lives in a bioactive terrarium. And this is one of my favorite ways to keep reptiles because one, since it's so natural, I feel like they're more comfortable this way. And two, it's really easy to maintain, so it's great if you're someone with a busy life like I am. Because setting it up as a bioactive tank creates its own little almost fully self-sustaining ecosystem, which is really, really neat. I also have my panther chameleon in a bioactive terrarium, and he's been thriving in here. And my Cuban false chameleon. So basically, bioactive terrariums are made up of three different parts. You start with your little pebbles or your clay marbles for a drainage system at the bottom, then you put a mesh screen in the middle, and then you put your substrate, which is usually a good mix of soil or coconut fiber. Then you can mix in some moss and some dried leaves. This will help maintain humidity. And of course, you know, depending on the species, if you have a reptile that needs hot, dry environments, you're gonna to wanna to do it differently. But the ones that we're focusing on today prefer humid environments. You're also gonna to wanna to add live plants because one, they look very nice. Two, it provides a nice natural hiding spot for your reptile, which will make them feel safe. And plus it's good for the soil to have an actual living plant in there with roots that are growing because then instead of the soil just sitting there plain, it's going to have something in it that's going to help prevent mold. Which leads me to my next thing. You're also going to want to add isopods, which is basically roly polies, and springtails, which are teeny tiny little bugs, and they work as a cleanup crew. And they live in the soil, so they're also going to help aerate it and prevent mold. And it's also going to be good for the plants, having them tunneling all around and aerating the soil for the plants. And the roly-polies and the springtails will help because they'll go behind your reptile and they'll clean up any waste that they make. They'll eat their feces, they'll eat leftover food, they'll eat the dead drying leaves that fall off of the plants. And you can get those off of a few different websites. You can get them off of Josh's Frogs, you can get them from the Bio Dude, you can get them from Pangea's website. And you can also find them from different breeders and vendors at reptile expos. So here's a quick look at what they look like. And they come in all sorts of different colors. They're really cool. And a cool thing about isopods is they live in little family groups and they take care of their young, so they're pretty interesting to watch as well. So I'm going to show you how to set up a bioactive tank for a crested gecko and any similar species, you can do the same way. And then I'm going to show you the unboxing of my new lily white crested gecko stud that I'm going to use for breeding. So here's the coconut fiber that I'm going to use as a substrate. It comes in a compact brick like this, so you put this in a container and add one gallon of water to it. You let it soak for 10 minutes and then it will expand and it'll be a lot more than what it looks like. So then we'll use that as a substrate and I'll mix a little bit of this in it as well. We also have some lag plants, some fake ones, vines, bamboo sticks because crested geckos are an arboreal species so they like to be up high and climb so that'll make them more comfortable. And then first things first, I'm going to soak these clay pebbles and rinse off all the dust and add them in here. I got this tank on Amazon. Actually, most of this stuff I got on Amazon, but a lot of it you can also find from different reptile websites like the Bio Dude, Pangea, or Josh's Frogs, just to name a few. All right, let's get all the dust off. Last batch. So satisfying. All right, so now I'm just gonna make it even and level. Perfect. So now I'm gonna take the screen and I'm gonna cut that to size and I'm gonna lay it right over the top of this and then we can soak this and then add the substrate. Alright, so I added the screen. 
Now I'm going to add some of the coconut chips to the bottom, just to help weigh it down. And since it's like little bark chips, it's, this will also help with drainage. Alright, now let's go soak this. Alright, let's find the bucket. This should work. Alright, I gotta turn on the hose real quick and clean it out. We have well water, so it's fine, but if you have city water, you're not gonna wanna use that. Unless you have a filter, of course. Oh, and make sure you subscribe, because later on I'll also be making a different video on how to care for crested geckos and some history and facts about the breed. But I'll be doing a video in October of a very new, very rare color morph of Crested Gecko that I'll be doing. And I'll show you the unboxing of that, so make sure you stay tuned. And then eventually down the road, I'll show you the egg hatching if all goes well. Alright, now let's watch it expand. Now we wait. All right, so it took longer than 10 minutes and I had to add a little bit more water than recommended, but it's finally ready. Oh, and as a side note, warm water makes it work a little bit quicker. So let's take this upstairs. Now, you can set up a bioactive tank maybe two to four weeks ahead of time if you really wanna establish a good colony of isopods and springtails. No monkey, look out. That way, they're already established and you have more numbers before you put your animal in. That way they don't start eating off the few isopods that you added. And luckily isopods reproduce really, really quick. Now, crested geckos can eat bugs. And it's especially good to supplement with bugs, especially if you're breeding them or if you have a young one that's growing. So they will occasionally probably pick off some of the isopods, which is fine because like I said, they reproduce really quickly. So your colony will remain established. And they're high in calcium, so it's good, especially for breeding females. But this is their main diet, which is really, really nice because I'm not a fan of bugs. I don't really like handling the bugs, so this is so easy. It's a powdered diet. It has all the supplementation they need in it. You just mix one part powder to two parts water, and you can put it in a little cap or a little dish for them. So it's a really, really easy species to keep. But I'm not going to go too much into that today because, like I said, I'm going to make a whole video on their care later on, so stay tuned for that. But anyway, getting back on topic, I'm going to add this, and then we're going to plant the lag plants. I got a snake plant. I actually propagated this little baby one myself. And these are actually one of the healthiest house plants you can have. And then we're gonna add this one. And then these assorted ones I got from Josh's frogs. And then after your soil's in and you pot your plants, you can add your isopods and your springtails. Okay, now for the fun part, let's add the plants. This one's gonna get tall, so I'll put it in the back. And you know, obviously these will grow and fill out and look really, really nice. Lovely. Okay, what are you doing? Yeah, they're nosy things. 
So Houston, we have a problem and this is totally my fault for not double checking the size, but these are just a bit short to reach the other side. But that's not a problem because like I said, I do have another younger one coming that's gonna go in a 10 gallon tank. This is gonna be the breeder tank, that's why this one's slightly bigger. So I'll save these for that. So I'll have to get different bamboo things put in here, but in the meantime, at least we have other stuff. Let me secure that. All right, so I have all the plants planted and I put some of the decorations in and now I gotta real quickly get some different vining in here since these didn't really work. That way you can just have some more hiding spots. I'll put in a few more plants right here. I'll show you the finished results and then I will show you the gecko unboxing. I think I heard a car door, maybe it's FedEx. What do you think, monkey? She loves laying in the sun. Let's go see. The FedEx guy is probably like, man, why is this girl always getting lizards? So this was shipped priority overnight. It was in here for less than 12 hours. And I do have a whole other video. If you watch the one about my chameleon gecko, I go all into detail about how they ship live animals. So check that out if you're curious for more details. And it was the perfect weather for shipping it. It's in the 70s. It's nice and cool. So it was ideal conditions. You can see they have it nice and packed very carefully in here so that way it doesn't get all jostled around. They had a cooling pack with it because Crash Geckos cannot handle the heat. Nice and insulated in here. And there's his date of birth and his pedigree. So here he is, a male lily white. Lily whites are a really, really popular morph. They're very expensive. So it's pretty cool that I could save up and get one of these. I think he'll make a really nice stud gecko. Cause like I said, it's a very popular color morph and this one's gorgeous. And with lily whites, you have a chance of getting offspring that are lily white and offspring that are normal. So it'll be cool. We'll get a nice mix with whatever I breed him to. He's a red-based lily white. You can see the red on him. All right, so I'm gonna get him in his tank. We'll leave him alone, let him settle down since he's had a long journey here. And then I will show you the finished tank afterwards. I'll show you in a couple days because like I said, I just wanna get him in his tank and let him settle in. And then I'll give you a little update. Oh, and real quick, before I put him in his tank and let him settle in, I did wanna mention, Crested Geckos, when they're shipped, you don't wanna put them in a tank that's an extreme temperature change from the temperature at which they were shipped at. So basically, crested geckos don't really need supplemental heating unless your house is colder than like your average room temperature. They prefer things on the cooler side compared to other reptiles. So you don't want to put them in a warm environment to begin with or a hot environment to begin with, I should say. 
and you especially don't want to do that after shipping. So just make sure that you keep them somewhere nice and cool, room temperature. And if you have a non-crested gecko, like if you have a reptile that does need extra heat, do not turn on any heat lamps or heat pads until it's had several hours to adjust to room temperature because you can shock it from going from one extreme to the next. They're cold-blooded, so that basically means that their body temperature is whatever the environment around them is, so you don't want to shock them. So once you unbox them, just put them in their enclosure at room temperature and let them settle in nice and quiet. I'm going to spray down his tank so he can get hydrated, but I mean, he looks perfect. Like I said, he was in there less than 12 hours, so he looks really good. And then tonight I'll offer him some food. And because reptiles are cold-blooded, that's why they do pretty well with shipping, because since their bodies kind of move in slow motion, I guess you could say, compared to warm-blooded animals, they can go longer without food and water, so him being in there overnight was perfectly fine. So here is the finished results, and like I said, the plants obviously will grow, so they'll fill out and look really nice, so stay tuned, I'll show you updates on that. And make sure you subscribe so you can see the new gecko that I'm getting. Like I said, she's a really rare, fairly new color morph, so this is going to be a really exciting pairing. And I'll also be making a, a Cressa Gecko care guide video as well, so stay tuned for that. I've named my new gecko Saffron, and he is settling in quite nicely, he seems very content.